I want to refer to a press release that was released by the Electoral Commission on the 30th of July 2024, outlining a number of activities to be undertaken ahead of the 2026 elections. Right Honorable Speaker, at number one, the Electoral Commission set out dates 6 to 16th of August 2024 for field demarcation of constituencies and electoral areas and reorganization of polling stations. Right Honorable Speaker, what is happening on the ground is that the Electoral Commission constituted a team that comprises of town clerks, chief administrative officers, district planners, sub-county administrative secretaries, and themselves as the team to do this work. What they are doing, right honorable speaker, is that they are splitting constituencies, electoral areas, they started with local governments, splitting electoral areas, merging some, and doing away with others. Right honorable speaker, in all this exercise, they have not involved uh, the political parties who are major stakeholders in this business. Right Honorable Speaker, I got to know about this from my councillors when they came to me when most of them were losing their constituencies. In accordance to the local government amended act of 2020, this house passed and this is what is being implemented uh, that a sub county to have a for sub county councillor somebody must have 30,000 voters in the KCCA 50,000 100,000 voters in other cities 100,000 voters municipal wards 15,000 vote 15,000 voters City division wards, 15,000 voters. Sub county, 12,000 voters. Town, towns, wards, 12,000 voters. And then municipal wards, 7,000 voters. Right, Honorable Speaker, as much as this is saying that they are implementing a law that was passed by this House, they are using the census of 2014 to determine the population, not the current census. Mr. Speaker, sir, after 10 years, the population did. So if you go out to create electoral areas, depending on the 2014 population census, you are, in essence, already rigging elections because uh, the number of our residents has drastically changed, especially for us who are in towns. Right, Honorable Speaker. Prayers, Honorable. There is also another issue, Right, Honorable Speaker, I want to raise. As they are decreasing, in, when they fall up with this, they have decreased the number of councillors. I've been looking at some of my councils. Some of them now have nine councillors. So if you have a council with nine councillors and four of them are on the executive and the three of them are chairpersons of committees, that means that committees now in the councils will have no members. You will find one councillor sitting alone on a committee to supervise a department of, 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 of the district, of, of the sub-county uh, or, or, or of a municipal council. Lastly, Mr. Speaker, using the, the, the failure to involve stakeholders, when we all agreed, Mr. Speaker, that we are operating in a multi-party system of governance and that political parties are major stakeholders, especially when it comes to elections. So this exercise, uh, the way it has been conducted, Mr. Speaker, leaves out to the major stakeholders and therefore 
leaves a lot to desire. So my prayers are, right honorable speaker, that at the electoral commission, through the minister for justice, be ordered, one, to involve all the stakeholders instead of using technical people uh, in creating constituencies. Two, that after 10 years, it is erroneous, right honorable speaker, to refer to population census of 2014. But I've told me that they are doing this because the, the, the results of the recently concluded population census have not been gazetted. But, Mr. Speaker, what does it take to gazette the results of a population census that has been concluded so that in 2026, we create constituencies basing it truly on the population quotas as the intention of the framers of our constitution was. And lastly, Mr. Speaker, that we make laws, but laws are not supposed to cause absurdities. Where you see that a council has been decreased to the number of councillors who cannot uh, constitute a council with its organs, then the best thing, right honorable speaker, would have been for the electoral commission to refer this matter back to parliament so that we reconsider the amendment we made. We made it in good spirit. We wanted to decrease the number of leaders. But our intention was not to create an absurdity like the case turning out, is turning out to be. Right, Honorable Speaker, I beg to move. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Numbers, Honorable Minister for Justice and Constitutional Affairs. This country is known as the Republic of Uganda. A republic means we are a representative government and the representatives are a result of elections. Therefore, electoral activities are paramount in these arrangements that are in our constitution. Now that this matter has been brought to the attention of government by the Honorable Member of Parliament representing Mukono Municipality, I want to state as follows. Number one, in decision making, you must seek the input of those who will be affected by the decisions. The cows, town clerks, the electoral commissioners are not candidates for elections. They are not players. Even you, if you are making rules for football, you consult the football clubs. Even if you are choosing referees. So this matter is, uh, is critical. As I understand it, the Honorable Member is stating that the Electoral Commission is perhaps misreading what the meaning of independence is. The Electoral Commission is independent, but it doesn't mean that they act alone and they don't act for themselves. For the record, let me state that this is not the first time the Electoral Commission has done things that have caused embarrassment. Yours truly was once removed from the voters' register. <laughs> by an electoral commission which claimed that they had retired the register. I had to go to court to prove that you cannot retire a register. You can compile and keep updating. So, let me take this as homework, but I will do the following two things. Number one, I'll meet them and, and hear their side. Number two, I will direct whoever is concerned to convene an extraordinary meeting of the National Consultative Forum of Political Parties. This is a constitutional body chaired by the ruling party, but the deputy chair is from the leading opposition party in parliament. 
I believe that, is, that will be a forum for us to do the right thing for those who will seek elections. Not everybody will be a candidate, but the parties are the best groups to make the input impactful. I promise that by as early as possible next week, you, you will have your actions. But you'll also hear in the media the things we are trying to do. We want to avoid gerrymandering. We, we do not want any accusation by those who will lose elections to claim that they lost because of the actions of the Electoral Commission. But they say a stitch in time saves nine. I thought I was being extremely clear. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Minister. The concern our colleague has raised has also been raised by many other councillors across the country. Section 108 of the Local Government Act talks about the population quota. Um, subsection 1 talks about 100,000 in the case of cities. Section C, 15,000 in the case of municipalities or city divisions. Isn't this a contradiction? Could you, would you clarify? Because this is for the representation for direct elected in the city council. One is talking about one councillor representing 100,000 people. So, Honorable, you want a minister to clarify on the law? Because this is a law. He, he, he is the, the right, he is the right person. House. I thought he is the right person to clarify on the law. Okay. Honorable Minister. Mr. Speaker, sir, laws are not suggestions. Everybody is obliged to comply. They are non-negotiable. So there is even no way the Electoral Commission will say they are doing the right thing if it is outside the law. It is as simple as that. So my job is simply to communicate clearly to them, one, that they need to act in a consultative manner, and two, they must be objective. And objectivity means that they must deal with current data. If you are using outdated data of 2014, if that is indeed the case, and their excuse is that it has not been gazetted, then that is, I agree, an absurdity. So, Mr. Speaker, sir, let me take this as homework. Thank you. And, and, and I'm glad there is still some agreement between the two former DP <laughs> friends. Huh? Huh? <laughs> I'm, I'm happy OB and OG are. Yes. But on, on, on a minister, really, this is an issue very, very critical issue. I think after all this, you need to update this house so that we are all informed. I have received calls, um, some people asking, so coming 2026, uh, each sub-county will have a female councillor? You know, th that's now what, yeah, okay, it's in the row, but now people are still debating it. So you need to come out and maybe you give us uh, uh, an information statement out of that roadmap so that we can go uh, and, and be able to update our people. Honorable mm -hmm. colleagues, we are already, we are already past uh, 3 p.m. It's already 3.30. Look at our other paper. Honorable Martin Mazari. Then the rest I will take tomorrow. <coughs> I will start with Honorable Betty Award tomorrow. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, I stand rise uh, a matter regarding payment of service charge for your committers and the general complaints on the new year committer. Right Honorable Speaker, we are paying for the units. We are paying a lot of money for installation of that meter. Between 750 to 800. Really, there is no further justification 
that we should again go ahead to pay for the service charge. Second, uh, right honorable speaker, the general complaints. The New Year Committee, it is presumed that the, its consumption is so high compared to the old one. The, uh, the New Year Committee, right honorable speaker, if the units run out, you have to look for a neighbor and plug it in. Yeah. Then that's when you can be able to load. I imagine a situation where you are about half a kilometer to your neighbor. Oh, late in the night, and all your neighbors are sleeping. You cannot approach them. Second, right honorable speaker, these uh, yakamitas, if you are loading, the digits are so many. In that, if you have a challenge with your sight, your eyesight, it is very difficult for you to load. I have witnessed it, my mother, whenever I send her, she gets challenges to load these units. Right, Honorable Speaker, these very year committers, we have a challenge when we are loading them. The network is always a problem. As you are loading, they tell you, wait, the units are not coming on the screen. You end up loading another one. So these are the challenges, right, Honorable Speaker. My prayer, the service charge should be scrapped. When MTN had just come and Airtel, they were charging these services. But as a result of competition, we no longer have these charges. Two, right honorable speaker, I don't know what UNBS is doing to approve these year committers, which are consuming a lot, uh, which do not fit the standards of Ugandans. Right honorable speaker, it is important that UNBS should approve these year committers, which can fit the standards of Ugandans. I'm also uh, praying that we get automated year committer digits so that immediately you load on your phone, it automatically goes on to save Ugandans who have challenges with their eyesight. I thank you, Right Honourable Speaker. Thank you.